Looking at the Markets with David Modell. Welcome to Looking at the Markets with David Modell. Today's special guest is Mr. Bo Polney, who is uh, just, I'm just going to call him a market expert. You know, some people call him a, a precious metals expert. Some people call him a, you know, a stock expert. You know, he's all of the above. He's incredibly popular and he deserves every bit of the popularity, both on YouTube and also you should check out his website as well. Uh, I can't forget what his website is because it's right there on the screen. <laughs> Gold2020forecast.com. Mr. Bo Polney, thank you so much for joining me today on Looking at the Markets. Pleasure, David. Thanks for reaching out, and uh, I look forward to speaking with you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for doing this. I really appreciate it. Um, you know, I'm looking on this uh, amazing website right now. Uh, at the top, you know, gold2020forecast.com. You're not shy about your forecasts. I like that. I like the bold, you know, I, again, I'm not going to call you a top caller because you're not. You just call it like you see it. It says in big letters here, first $35 sil silver, then $60 and then $100 plus in 2017. Are you still standing by that prediction? Um, yes, absolutely. Um, the first target I want to see hit is 36, and that's going to be really exciting. It depends when that's hit. Um, and so, yes, I'm standing by my aggressive targets. Um, I for sure see $60 in new all-time highs this year, and it could, and 100 or three digits is very, very probable still for this year. But to say that uh, gold and silver are, are not going to do incredibly well this year into year end is, is not, not going to happen. So very bullish, and I'm standing by my position, yes. Yeah, because silver is, even though it's it's up moderately today, but it is experiencing a dip, and I am so tempted to jump in there. Um, now, I'm an ETF kind of guy, and uh, very recently I interviewed Miss Lynette Zhang, who gave me a, a verbal smackdown for even mentioning SLV, GLD. Uh, what is your impression of ETFs? Are they safe to invest in, or should we should people go with the physical stuff? Number one is, is I... I I don't want to give financial advice. I'm not a financial uh, advisor. Gotcha. But I can very clearly tell you what what you know. What my perspective is and what I personally do. I hold zero ETFs. Okay. I don't believe in them. Um, and everything I hold is in physical format because I. The point is, if you believe that gold is money or soon to be money and silver is soon to be money, and you believe the word is precious and they will be one day precious then holding it in paper format is completely completely contra uh, opposite or of what your the point of having silver is or gold because they're ultimately insurance so if you're holding it in paper format you don't understand the concept of what gold and silver are because you don't you either hold insurance or you don't hold insurance and if someone else is holding your insurance policy for you well now there's the high probability that you will never get paid on your insurance policy because gold and silver are both money and insurance against the people that create paper fiat now what we talked about silver and your particular price target oh, and, uh, and actually what well, one last thing is yeah. on that is with I personally to, to since I I think what you're doing is, is the right concept on SLV or, you know, believing in silver is going to go up. Um, but I my thought very clearly is here. Once silver takes out $22, anybody holding SLV is going to get, I think, extremely hurt. They're going to they'll probably lose their whole position. Really? So you got to watch that 22. When it takes out 22, you better – I personally would never hold SLV after gold hits 22. Interesting. Something to look for. Uh, what about gold? Has your uh, price target changed on that recently? No, no. Um, you know, from what the bottom line on gold is very simple. In the year 2011, it made a top. I said it won't go any higher. I, um, if you've watched my YouTube videos, um, I actually illustrated it was a mathematical calculations, which is insane, but it worked to the exact day. So gold and silver in the year 2011 both topped 1,267 days to the exact day from their prior important tops or cyclical highs. And so as of 2011 at $1,900, gold reversed and silver have they been both in downtrends in a secular bull market. And so all you've had happen is a price retracement 
I am, if you go to my webpage, um, in December of 2015, I scheduled an interview. I'm the, I don't know that there's one other person that did this. If there is, please let me know. But I, I scheduled the interview a month in advance saying that gold will go no lower than a cycle time point of December 3rd. That price came in at $1,045. And gold has never gone lower than $1,045. Yeah. And that was the cycle low from the high that occurred in the year 2011. And now gold is in an uptrend. Regardless of the, in the short-term price reversal that we've seen, but I think if you go back and watch any um, presentations that I've done, or any um, uh, uh, any any articles that I've written since the year 2016 and since Trump's been elected, I was very clear on everything that I've stated that Trump holds a $1,200 golden floor, and it will not break 1,200 since the election. And that's held perfectly, and gold is in an uptrend, and you got support at 1200 on gold. Uh, and today's low came in at uh, 1204, 1205. Um, and my last week's forecast to subscribers was look for support to come in right around 1205. So um, that's that's my position. Gold is is uh, in a secular bull market, and off the low of 2015, all that's left. I have said it several times and we've missed the spike, but it's irrelevant because the high still comes in in the year 2018. So next year we have a, we have a cyclical high coming in on gold. And so between 2015 and 2018, there will be a low to a new all-time high uh, for gold. And it should not be just, a, just over 2,000. It's supposed to be incredibly, uh, you know, several thousand, probably a couple to a few thousand dollars higher above $2,000 next year. I'm looking at, on your website, you have, and I've never seen anybody else do this, and I, I've spoken with Charles Nenner, I mean, it's some of the some of the greats, many of the greats, David Morgan, but you have your list of exact day forecasts and a very, uh, very high uh, accuracy rate here. It's, it's really incredible. And you've actually mentioned, this is a quote from you, life is full of cycles that do nothing more than replay themselves at different price points. How do you determine these cycles? Well, that's basically what we talked. If you go back and watch some of the videos, but it's all revolving around the mathematical number of seven. Okay, and and biblically, seven's a very powerful number. You have the seven day war. I'm sorry, six day war followed by a day of rest, which would be seven days, seven days in a week, seven oceans, uh, seven continents. It's just you can go on and on about the number seven. Uh, so seven is not a random number. Then you take seven, you multiply it by the number 360, which is a biblical year. Okay, a biblical year is not 364.25 days, um, uh, but it's actually 360. When you multiply those, you end up getting tw uh, 2,520. Uh, it's when you can drop a zero. Um, and then the whole cycle just, re so you can take a seven, cut that in half to three and a half, which is basically 42 months you can cut uh, 42 months and a half again and you get 21 months 21 divided by three is three sevens so basically it's just circles circles is a three a circle is 360 degrees and so seven can be broken down into a circle and therefore a circle is a cycle and yes it all sounds crazy but it's mathematically perfect and and the, the number seven, can, it's incredible how it, using that number seven, which is basically 1,200, half of that is 1,260. 1,260 from the prior high of $1,900 gold, you can go back and count to the exact day gold topped at 1,267, so you'd add another seven. So cycles are nothing more than circles, and yes, it is, it is not easy to figure this out. So, um, you know, people you know, who like to criticize don't understand the complexity of, of how the markets work, but on the other end of it, in the simplest format, gold is in a secular bull market, and the bull market continues for years forward, and what we're experiencing is a pullback, uh, and, it's, and it's still a new all-time high, an extremely powerful high, will arrive next year on a cycle high because that's a mathematical calculation which comes in next year in the year 2018. Fascinating. 
and you know it doesn't sound crazy at all, at all to me uh, it, actually it, it makes a lot of sense uh, and you know for the doubters out there go ahead and check out uh, the rate of accuracy on gold 2020 forecast.com uh, by the way speaking of that when people go on to gold 2020 forecast.com what are the services that you're currently offering there um, well, first off, was if you look at some of the forecasts, the, the cool thing about those is, you know, there's 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 misses that we've had, and then you know, since the markets haven't exploded, the biggest misses we've had, and virtually most of all the misses we've had, is been on the stock market because that's the most heavily manipulated paper ass paper entity that's out there. But but the gold cycles follow uh, follow the biblical patterns very, very closely. So the neat thing is if you look at those calculations or those those hits and misses, the crazy part is the miss the hits, the actual ones that are correct, were not only like kind of okay to the week, to the month, no, they're to the day. Yeah. So the probability of having a forecast hit to the day once is in, is incredible. To have it hit twice is beyond that, and to have it hit five or six or, or ten calculations that work out to the exact day, the probability of that, I, I, I guess I'm not a statistician, but somebody would have to you know, let me know the probability of how small that mu the minute possibility would be to calculate to the exact day many of these price moves. So, so, and so again, the what we offer on our web page is is, uh, is a stock index, which really there is, there's not been a whole lot to say about the stock market since it's reversed and it's going into new highs. But we can talk about that in the interview a little bit today. Um, and then we offer a gold index. And the gold index specifically, um, we cover in there the gold uh, cycle projection specifically will be the move um, into next year. Um, and so that's the exciting part because mathematically there is a cycle time point which calculates out for the top next year in 2018. Um, and and then you know and then most and then beyond that, something we don't offer on the web page, but actually I'll send you the link because we've we basically had a large influx of people on it. It's for the um, uh, crypto uh, currencies, right. and so I've kind of turned it off. But if you like, I can send you the link, and you can link it at the bottom of this interview. And Absolutely. if anybody's interested in the cryptocurrencies, they can uh, subscribe to this link. But that's been the most exciting part because. To be honest, gold and silver, you know, really, they're in the tail end of a, um, of a massive six-year wedge. So there really hasn't been a whole lot of movement uh, in precious metals uh, sure. relative to the past, you know, year, this, this this year. But the exciting part has been the cryptos, as, you know, people have been talking about them quite a bit. Oh, yeah. I get questions about that all the time. And speaking of that, you know, Bitcoin, Ethereum, Ripple, Litecoin, so on and so forth, it seems like – is there any – room left to squeeze out new highs i mean it's it, it, they've just gone up so much so fast recently um i i feel it's kind of frothy what do you think i think if you don't own cryptocurrencies you are so going to miss out on one of the biggest moves um financial moves uh in, in history um cryptos were going to outperform gold and silver um and the reason is is because the entities that be are going to, even though the price of silver might double or triple, which is fantastic, that's nothing to what the cryptocurrencies will do. Um, and so if you're not invested in cryptocurrencies, um, I think you're going to miss the boat. And, and so um, if you like, I actually, as I, I hope in the year, you might want to ask, talk about the cryptos, but I, I did Bitcoin. I This is what I give to my subscribers, but I removed the forward portion of time points into, into the future, but I think you might actually appreciate this. Sure. Um, and you can see, so this I think chart will answer your questions, you know, is Bitcoin getting frothy? So have, have a look here. And so this chart start, it start, starts out in April right here. Can you see that right there? Yeah, if you pull it back a little bit, it'll be, it'll be even better. See it right there, David? There we go. Short term time. Okay. Yep. Yeah, so all you've got is a channel, okay? And so on this day, I emailed all my subscribers saying, you know, top's in. So we, I, I got out of my position and I sold exactly when to hit that candlestick at top right there. So that's yeah. where I exit all my positions. And all you're seeing is uh, it's pretty kind of fun. It's it's very, very bullish. Uh, you've got, you got a one, you got a five count small, five count medium, and a five count massive. So off this, you're going to get a, once it takes a 1250, you're going to get a massive explosion. So minimum target on, on Bitcoin you know, in, in the near term. And add, oh, another interesting thing is it's making $200 uh, higher lows. So basically, Bitcoin's moving up by about $100 per week. 
as, as of this moment in time. And so, um, you know, it's going to go to 3,000 and 4,000. It's going to make some massive moves very, very quickly. Uh, so to not own, so it, Bitcoin right now at 25, you know, by the end of the year, it'll, it'll, be, it'll be astronomically higher. Um, so again, it's going to move with gold, but it's going to outperform gold. Yeah, I like that chart because you can get shaken out, and a lot a lot of people will by those small downward channels. But if you pull back the chart and look at the big picture, and you'd seem like a big picture thinker to me, you can see the channel is still upward, and there's more room to go. Oh, exactly. That's the, that's the fun part. They're actually every low comes in two hundred dollars higher yep. than the prior low. You, those are called higher lows. That's yep. a bull market. <laughs> wow. Very good. And, sir. and all you've got is a channel formation, and it looks that way. But that's I always step back and look at the big picture, like you said, and I draw my wave counts out and I apply my cycles of what I see projected into the future. And all I see is bigger numbers for Bitcoin. It's definitely not going down. Let me, let me you know, say that. And there are some cycle points that I just like that short term top came in. I'm going to exit a few down the road um, because Bitcoin, to be honest, is, is fun to trade. But there's other ones that outperform Bitcoin, and that's the excitement. And so Bitcoin's like your gold, and then you've got your other ones, which are which are like silver on steroids. You know, right. so you've got so they're they're moving double, triple relative to what Bitcoin does, and that that's what I've been doing for the past uh, three months now, and it's been rather incredible. And it's just so it's it's really been exciting because at least you can do something versus just watch the paint dry you know, relative to gold and silver. It's it's really, you know, the the manipulation is is so incredible. Uh, it's going to soon to end, but you know, until it ends, it's just you know, there's nothing to watch in gold and silver. Yeah, and if you put that Bitcoin uh, special link there, uh, I'll put it in the description if you if you get that to me. Absolutely. Um, now I also yeah, I'll, yeah. I'll send it you. Absolutely. Now I also like to get into the the just real quick a personal aspect of who you are as a as an investor and as a person. I mean, how did you get into the precious metals and other markets in the first place? How did you how did you find that you have a, a gift for being able to identify and relate these cycles? Well, I didn't know I had any kind of gifts or anything. I just I'm I'm a hard I, I I'm very diligent in what I do and I study. A lot. I do. You know, I spend you know, thousands of hours trying to analyze patterns that no one else sees, and then I try to apply mathematical calculations to them. And so that's really the what I've come up with. And and then yeah, just you know, sometimes it just you know, you just you just, you just get things you know that somebody you just get an idea and you look at it, and many times these ideas actually end up coming to, coming to fruition as well too because there, there, are, there are calculations and there are different ways of doing them. And so you need to always try to find out, you know, if something doesn't happen, what was wrong with the calculation? Because the cycles, the long term, the big picture cycles, they're all perfect because they're, they're, they're created biblically by God, right? So the, the error comes in as us as humans trying to figure out wh where we are relative in time. And so that's what they, so we make the errors individually, but the cycles themselves, you know, are are end up and the long and the big picture always are end up being perfect. Um, personally, I got involved in gold and silver um, years ago, um, and it all started with um, you know I, I guess well uh, you know from my parents came out of Europe and they basically you know they've seen. Uh, incredible problems in in the monetary system where you know you wake up one morning and you know the currency that you are using in that country can be devalued by 70 80 percent overnight you know and so here we in the US you know cannot fathom something like that but what if it ever happened you know what if that ever happened and that's the problem you know that I see happening is I think we're setting up for that relatively soon and people are not going to believe what happened. And the people who are like myself or yourself, you know, hopefully you, David, and that you've got some physical silver, um, will be in a situation where we were expecting what just happened, and we don't need to react. Right. We can just appreciate, you know, 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 know what happened, appreciate it, and not react because we knew it was coming. Right. And so that's the bottom line. Is I, I don't think that. When an event comes into, into fruition here in the future, um, and gold explodes, people are like, well, we didn't know that was going to happen, but the cycle said it was going to, yeah. and and so all I know is that between now and tw and, and into 2018, there's going to be a very powerful move on gold. So the question is, what will be the event 
um, that will trigger it. And so the, that's one thing that all of us just have to wait for it and we'll see. Yeah. No one can know what the catalyst is going to be, but it's going to happen sooner or later. And the more prepared we are, you know, like you said, it won't be such a surprise if you just open your eyes and your mind and just pay attention to the cycles and to what's going on, what's really going on beneath the surface. Uh, and finally, uh, just the S&Ps, the, you know, the Dow, the NASDAQ, all the above. Um, you know, we talked about cryptocurrency seeming, seeming a little toppy. Well, this whole... This whole market, uh, is is this the year? I mean, uh, Charles Nenner told me that uh, Q3 of 2017, which is upon us, is when uh, this whole Trump trade is finally going to turn into a bust. Um, what's, yeah, I'm not expecting you to, to be a top caller, of course, but what's your take on it? Well, I would apply gold into this equation because when the markets crash or they take a, a, a sharp decline, right, which way is gold going to go? Certainly up. It's up. It's not going to do what it did in 2008, 2008 where gold dropped. Right. Because gold is now the opposite trade to the stock market. Don't believe me. Pull up a long-term chart on the stock market and gold. And you will notice as of 2012, uh, after the top, gold has been in a down cycle and the stock market has been in a up cycle. So they're inversely proportional, okay? So on, the, on, the, on a gold explosion or a gold move, you're gonna have the stock market fall. So let me show you this. I think you've seen I've done this before. Here's, let's talk, we'll talk about gold and then go back right to the stock market, okay? Yep. But here's a long-term six-year wedge Weekly on chart. gold, Yep. okay? And, and so you'll see 2011, 1900, 2015, You'll see it, uh, I'm sorry, no, 2011, 2012, 2015, sorry, sorry, 16, I can't see that. And then basically it poked its head out here and then reversed. But this is a, a live chart just, just as of today, the uh, the 10th of July. Right. Um, the point being is that, you know, what exact, everybody's on the news, you know, saying is going to do this or that, it's all going to go down. Show me exact, explain to me how that's bad, what just happened to gold. There's nothing wrong with it. Everybody's so emotional about gold, but a, but a ten dollar, twelve dollar drop last week on gold didn't change anything. We're still in a bull market trend, higher lows. Okay, right. and so we're gonna zo let's zoom in on this chart here. You'll see right here when this wedge breaks. Make sure I'm so yeah. This wedge, the the, the cycle, um, the resistance is at twelve sixty. Okay, so. 1260 will shortly break. When 1260 breaks, expect the stock market to get hit to the downside. Um, so um, I think Netter, uh, his quote to you or statement would be correct because um, I would watch very closely uh, the last week of this month, July, and then furthermore into August. Um, but I wanted to, in, in doing so, I wanted to show you something here which is rather cool. Remember last, two years ago with the blood moons? Remember how the, everybody's talked about the blood moons? Yep. I, I did a math calculation here. I want to show you this. There is the blood moons right there. Are you with me? Yep. Okay, so there's the blood moons and nothing happened. The last blood moon came in on September 28th of 2015. Okay, so mathematically, from September 28th, 2015, I'm going to add 666 days. Okay. Which is July 25th, of 2017. So I'm actually giving your, this is on my, I put, made a video of this about a week and a half ago. I'm yeah. giving this into your viewers, okay? But my point is, and that adds up to also a triple seven, which is a very powerful number. Yeah. Okay. So will something happen on that date? Maybe very highly probable there's a very very high possibility something goes down on that time point which is again the last week of july so i would not be surprised if we see extreme volatility start then and i believe that's when all the excitement is going to begin uh, i and i would state this again just because we're looking for a high for gold next year in silver i would 
say ex with extremely high probability that we will not, the world, we will not make it until September before gold explodes with silver. So I believe that we're going to either see it the end of tail end of this month or into August. But it will happen before September hits. Um, and, and so I believe we're going to see that market drop um, this month uh, as, as, and at the latest uh, in August. But I, again, I'm watching closely the very last week of July. It takes guts to make specific calls like that, but you have the guts to do it. And you have the, you have the methodology as well. Uh, with the cycles, with the you know the number seven just keeps coming up over and over. I don't think these can all be coincidences. I think there's a reason and a, a method to this. And um, you know, if you go to gold2024cast.com, check it out. Uh, you know, I don't see why people would not want to be prepared when it all when you know when it all happens. I mean. You know, you got to be at least hedging with some precious metals. You got to be at well, least. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry, just, just if you think about it. The U.S. dollar, I, I made a video titled The Trap is Set on, in, on December 15th yep. of 2016, which was about seven months ago. And I said that the U.S. dollar will go no higher. I don't know how many analysts I've listened to. Every one of them for seven months have been saying the dollar is about to rebound. It's going to go higher. They've been saying this for seven months, and every single analyst who's called for higher gold prices has been wrong for seven months consecutive now okay that was a cycle high and the dollar has a down cycle if the dollar's going down what is the anti-dollar gold and yep, silver precious metals okay that's the gold the dollar is not going to go up it is going to crash and collapse next it's got terribly low targets into next year okay so the dollar is going to be falling hard of uh, this year into next year and so if the dollar's falling the anti-dollar is gold and silver and everybody should be looking at having some precious metals in their portfolio don't just trust the system don't just trust the stock market to carry you through to retirement or whatever your goals are you got to be thinking big picture mr bo polney has been thinking big picture for us and with us for such a long time i know your time is precious um i really appreciate all the wisdom today uh how can besides going to gold 2020 forecast.com how else can people tap into your wisdom and foresight Honestly, watch watch my videos. Um, I don't do too many videos because it really hasn't been a whole lot to say. But I did want to do this one with you. Um, specifically, was for the timing aspect of it because I think right. we're coming into July, which is the, uh, the slide I just showed you. I think we have a very important time point. So that was one of the main reasons I wanted to do the interview at, at this time point. Yeah. So there was a, a, the reason for it. Um, and so now, uh, you and I, David, and and the rest of your viewers, we sit back and we watch. Yep. But I'm positioned um, both with cryptocurrencies and with um, size, you know, with gold and silver. And, and I'm waiting and watching and I'm going to enjoy the rest of my summer yep. because at this point I've done everything I know I need to, to do. Now I'm ta I've taken care of, um, you know, my financial house and I wait. And I'm honored that you've chosen my little YouTube channel <laughs> to help promote the message that people do need to be, pre be prepared for this uh, very likely to happen upcoming event. So for better or for worse, right? Mr. Bull Paul. Exactly. And, yep. and again, if it does nothing triggers on that date, that doesn't change a long-term cycle. Right. But my point very clearly, so just don't misunderstand the words here. That is a very interesting time calculation. Let's see what happens. Right. But the direction for gold and silver is up into next year with a floor for gold at 1200 so that is that is you know the main point to understand with relation to gold right understood and duly noted thank you sir mr bo polney uh you're welcome back anytime you can use my little channel for uh, any <laughs> any warnings we will certainly heed them thank you sir for joining me today on looking at the markets thanks david appreciate it okay thank you for watching please like comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.